friends, and welcome back to my crafty space where I share my memory keeping projects and processes with all of you. My name is Crystal, and I am super excited that you are all here today. Today, we are starting the first project using the Home Story Kit in the Story Kit Crush series. So this is going to be the fifth story kit that we will be crushing together. Uh, we chose, I actually put a poll up on my Instagram and asked you guys what kit you would like me to crush this month. I think I gave uh, three or four different choices, and you guys unani almost unanimously voted for home. So, home it is. Um, the other ones that I put up there actually had quite a few votes on them too, um, but we will probably tackle those at a later time since I know that you guys are interested in those stories as well. So we are going to be talking about home this month and stories related to home. Now I, once again, only have the digital kit for this for this kit. So I am going to be showing you guys throughout the course of the month different ways that you can crush your digital kit as well. So let me tell you about today's story. Today I am going to talk about my homes that I grew up in. So I moved three times, well I moved into three different homes as I was growing up. Um, so I went on to Google Maps and Zillow and Realtor.com and found photos of all three of those houses to use for this project. Then um, I used the different elements from different journaling cards and embellishments to create a, a page, a single page that will be outside the pocket to document these three homes. So before we jump into the process here on my desk, I am going to take you over to my computer onto Photoshop Creative Cloud to show you how I created all of the different components that we're going to be using here on the desk. Then we'll come back over here, we'll put this project together, and then um, you know, we'll close out and call that good. So let's just go ahead and jump right in. I will meet you guys over at the computer. Okay, friends. So we are over here on my desk inside of Photoshop Creative Cloud, and I want to show you how I created the different components to this page right here. This is what we're going to be working on when we get back over to my craft desk. So this is a story all about growing up and the homes that I lived in as I was growing up. So let me just get us started. So the first thing I did, I actually went on to Zillow and Realtor.com and grabbed images of the three homes that I grew up in. And then I brought them into Photoshop here and cropped them to an inch and a half by an inch and a half at 300 pixels per inch. So that is the size of these three photos that I will just add to a four by six in order to print those off. So let me just grab that open. We will open up those three images and then we're going to add them onto this four by six and that is where we will print them from. So there's one, there's two, and there is three. So that gives me my three photos and now those I'm just gonna print off on uh, Canon Print, uh, photo paper. So my Canon Glossy 2 photo paper. Okay, next I want to create the uh, cardstock portion of this spread. So what I did is I opened up a new canvas sized at 6.825 by, oh, sorry, 6.875 by 8.25. So that is the size of a page protector. Here we are. So this is what I started with. Now I wanted to add a little bit of of like pattern to this. So what I did is I opened up the, um, it says if these walls could talk card, and then I grabbed my marquee tool and used that in the rectangle shape to just grab a portion of the top of this card. Then I right clicked it and said layer via cut, grabbed that layer, copied it, and then went back over to my large canvas and pasted it right on there. Now you can see that this is just a little section. So I moved that up to the top here and then I'm just going to keep adding them and I may just have to, actually I don't even have to, um, but you might have to like nudge them just a little bit. I actually didn't need to do that. So, and then I made the three that lined up there. Then I came over to my layers panel and grabbed layer three, layer two, and layer one and then right clicked those and merged those layers together. So now this is just one thing. 
So I'm going to stick it back up there at the top. Now I am going to copy that and paste it again and we're going to put that down on the bottom. So my idea for these is actually to print them off on um, fabric paper. I want to try using using these little strips to add some more texture to this page. So um, those I'm actually going to add to an eight and a half by 11. And um, we don't need this anymore. I'm going to add them to an eight and a half by 11 and print off two strips on here. So we'll just have them go across the whole thing. That's fine with me. And then, um, so these will be printed off on, on that fabric paper. Okay, so we'll just leave those as they are. So now we've got the two sections here. Next, let's talk about this title. So for the title piece, I used a card, a journaling card that is a four by six that says my growing up homes and then memories, thoughts, feelings, experiences. So what I wanted to do was to break this card apart and use the different components to create my homes growing up. So what I did is grab my marquee tool, made sure this background is selected, and I'm just going to draw a box around the word my, then I will layer, layer via cut, click back on the background again, and then we're going to do the same thing for the words, nope, we're gonna do the same thing for the words growing up. There we go, layer via cut, grab the background again. Next, we're gonna do the word homes, which I had to go a little bit bigger on because of the parentheses there layer via cut. And then last but not least, I want to grab this little memories, thoughts, feelings, experiences, and we are going to layer via, not that, we're going to layer via cut. There we go. So now all of these pieces are separated. So now what I can do is I can go and grab that original one that said my. I'm going to copy it and then I will go back to my original canvas and paste it. So now I can go ahead and move that up to the top. Next, I want the word homes. So I have my selection tool here selected. So I'm just, or what is this called? The move tool? The move tool. Selected. So I'm just going to grab the word or click on the word homes. We're going to copy that and then we're going to paste that one on this page as well. So we're starting, we're starting to build this here. Now we're going to grab the word growing up, copy that paste it over here on my canvas and then we're going to grab this subtitle and then we will bring that over onto the canvas as well. So these are my pieces. Now with the growing upward, I wanted this to take up more space. So I did go ahead and expand it to fill up more of the space. So there we go. These I also um, expanded just a tad to right about there. And then I just left this as it was. So what we'll do is add all of this into the middle of the page, just so that we are centered here. That looks good. And then these I want not quite centered. We'll just put them there for now. So that is where my title came from right here. Now, I also added this little gray house. So that was one of the plastic pieces looks like this. All I did was copy the layer and add that right onto my canvas. And then I brought it up close to the titles here and I just shrunk it down to kind of match the size of these words. Let's see if we can. There we go. So now this is about the same size as the words. We'll move it over. You know what? I actually want it to go a little bit. There we go. A little bit more. So that is not what I want to do. So I want to move this house closer in and then I can grab these top three layers and center them based on the three together. So now we've got my titles here ready to go. Let's go back to that original one. It looks like I did put them down a little bit more, but that's okay. So then to get my design going here, I did go ahead and take those. Where did we go? Mm, they're somewhere in here. There we go. I took these photos here and added them onto my page as well. And this was to help me figure out where my journaling was going to go. So I've got, you know, all three of these, which will be printed on photo paper. So this background's going to be cardstock. And then the stripe will be the fabric paper. Um, this I'm going to print right on here. And then the photos I will add on, you know, once I get the rest of it. So there is that. 
Then I wanted to add the house numbers to each of these houses. So I opened up the cork numbers, which are obviously not cork on here, um, and, but you know, they work. So I have the cork numbers. So I'm just going to copy that and paste it over onto my canvas. Then from here, I did the transform, which for me is control T. So I could go up to the top and rotate it 90 degrees. Then I could bring that into the center of where I want it to go and reduce the size down however small I want it to be. So I did that for all of the numbers I needed and then added those on here. So I reduced their size enough that five numbers would fit from top to bottom of the photo because I have two homes that I have lived in. I can actually go a little further. I have two homes that I've lived in that um, had a five number address. So that worked for me. Once I had my numbers on there, now the numbers I'm actually going to use my silhouette to cut out um, of probably black cardstock is what I will do. Then I grabbed my text tool and I just made a text box here to add my journaling in. Now I made sure not to go all the way over to the edge because I am going to hole punch this side. Uh, so I just, you know, made it a little bit smaller than the photos and definitely not all the way to the edge. So then, you know, my journaling would look like this block right here. So then all I did was copy this and paste it so that I could get it lined up in the same spots. And then that gave me my journaling blocks so that I could then go in and add my journaling to. Let's position you. There you go. Um, all right. So I think that that is pretty much it that I did here. So yes. So for printing, my photos will go on photo paper. Um, over here is the fabric stuff. Now I, I am going to take this little house right here, which at this point I can probably just get rid of this now that you guys see all of it. So I'm going to take this little house and I will also add that to this fabric printout. So I want you, I want this little guy to be fabric as well. And then, um, I don't need that anymore. Yeah, we don't need that anymore. So, and then what I'm going to do, or what I did, is I took all of these numbers and I added them to a four by six um, journaling card or six by four. So the reason for that, let's, if I just grab them all here, we can copy it and we can paste it onto here. We can transform the whole thing and let's go negative 90 so that they're all in the middle. Okay. So from here, I saved this this document right here as a PNG for address numbers. And that is how I can pull it into my silhouette to create a um, cut file for it. The other thing I am going to cut out with my silhouette, I'm not sure yet if I will use it in that way. I mean, I, I probably will, is this growing up statement right here. So I took that, I also added that to a six by four and saved it as a PNG so I could turn it into a cut file. So then uh, to get these created, I did go to my silhouette program and I opened up those documents. So here is the house numbers. For this one, I grabbed my trace tool, select trace area, and just drew a box around those numbers. Once the box was, um, once it like loaded, all of the yellow highlights is what it will trace. So I'm gonna hit that trace button and then I can just delete the original, um, the original document there and I am left with my numbers. So then if I want, I can go in and if anything needs to be adjusted, I can go ahead and make those adjustments so that the cut lines don't interfere with each other, but everything actually looks pretty good right here. So this I'm going to cut out of black cardstock. For the title piece, um, let's pull that in really quick as well. So here is the PNG portion. You know, Let me zoom in a little bit so you can see it better. We're going to do the same thing. So we're going to use the trace tool, select the trace area, and then we're going to draw a box around the title there. So once this loads, it will highlight yellow what it's going to trace. As you can see, it's highlighting nothing. So what I want to do is put my threshold all the way up, all the way up to the top. And I also, let me see if this is what I did originally. is where it gets a little tricky. So I put my threshold 
to where, actually I think I just did it all the way down. So we've got that, we've got our threshold all the way up, we've got our despeckle threshold all the way down. Is it high pass? Nope. Well, let's just see. So we're gonna trace this. Now that it's traced, we can grab that original file and delete it. Yep, this worked. So then we can zoom in and see that there are these little speckles in here. That is not what I meant to do. There are these little speckles and I wanna get rid of those so that you know my machine doesn't try to cut out a dot. So I'm gonna click on the entire cut file here. I will go up to object and select release compound path. Then I can deselect the whole cut file. Once it's deselected, I can go in and click on these little dots in here and just delete them so that you know they're not going to make my cut file wonky. So now all of those are removed. I can reselect all of those pieces, go back up to object and say make compound path. Once I do that, it is back to being one file again. Oh, I missed one. Let's grab that. <laughs> Let's get this last one. There we go. Now we can put it all back together. Okay, and then I can go ahead, I can go ahead and um, print this guy out or cut this guy out. So I am gonna try cutting this out of some uh, teal, some teal looking color just like this or uh, teal cardstock that is in this color category because I like the color with all of this, uh, but if I don't like it, then um, I, what I might do is just print it like this, print this page without the pictures, without all the numbers, leave that, um, with just the title and uh, the journaling blocks and everything else will be removed and printed on separate, separate textured papers. So we'll see how that goes. And then I can just add my uh, cut file cut file right on top of the pre-printed thing. It's not a big deal. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and get these items printed out and over to my craft table, and then we will work on getting this page assembled. So I will see you over at the craft table. Okay, so here we are back at the desk, and let's um, let's just get this thing assembled. So since this is all uh, <laughs> mostly done digitally, the hard work is, for the most part, pretty much done. So what I'm gonna do here is get this page trimmed out. Now this was 6.875 wide, right here, by 8.25 tall. So we're gonna go ahead and trim that all the way out. So here is essentially our background piece. Now while I have my trimmer out, let me go ahead and get these strips done as well. So the orange and white stripe I did print on this fabric paper. Um, and I also have that little house there, which I'll, I'll just fussy cut that guy out here in a second. But let's go ahead and trim out these orange stripe strips, strip stripes. And then we can get those adhered down onto the page as well. Okay. So, yeah, because these are really nice and thin. Let me make sure I'm applying even pressure so I don't move the paper. Okay, so there's one. And then let's do this other one. You know what? I want to do it this way first. And then we'll do the other side. Now this paper is technically not adhesive. Uh, it does have a, uh, it's technically like iron-on, right? So it does have um, a, like a sticky-ish, it's not really sticky, it's like slippery almost um, backing, but that is because it was made to be printed on and then to be ironed on to a project. Okay, again, even pressure as we cut this out. There we go. So there are my two strips, yay. And then this guy, I will just fussy cut out with my Cutter Bee precision scissors. When you are fussy cutting, especially really small things, I always recommend using the smaller precision scissors because it does give you a lot more control over the uh, areas that you're cutting. So like for me, especially with these little tiny things, it just works out in my benefit to use the tinier scissors. So much more control, yeah. Okay, so I'm just gonna get this guy 
cut out here other than this little house and those strips of orange and white I'm not really using any other embellishments so this is what's going to add the texture to my page uh, it's still going to be relatively flat because these don't like pop up or anything um but but it will give that it'll give it some texture so it won't just look like I printed out the whole page okay let's little bit more on that side and then I think we're good okay so there's my tiny house which we're going to be putting over here all right so there's that now let me get rid of these bits and pieces here that I don't need anymore that scrap piece I might I feel like because this won't go through my printer anymore because it's too small so I'm like maybe I'll try like painting on it and see what happens that could be kind of fun experiment for another time okay so I also already got the titles and my house numbers uh, cut out through my silhouette which I showed you guys how I did that so those are all in here um, and what I want to do is just go ahead and get these three little pictures cut out here and then we can start adhering stuff down and um, that's pretty much gonna be it this is a really easy one so um, what can I tell you guys about this? So my houses. So I was uh, born in, I was born and raised in Michigan. I've always lived in Michigan. And for the most part, I've always lived in the same town. So um, the first house that we lived in was this little downtown house. It was like one, it was like a hundred years old and um, had a Michigan basement, which a Michigan basement just means that it's like stone. So there is a basement, but it's not, it's usually like um, dirt floors and stone walls and they're usually kind of creepy. Uh, but, so like my mom was creeped out of our basement, which is kind of funny. Um, but yeah, that was our first house. It had like two, it had three bedrooms and one bathroom. And super fun fact, when Aaron and I were looking to buy a house, that original first house we lived in was on the market. So we went and toured it um, to like go see if we liked it. It was definitely, it was too small for um, what we were looking at. Uh, but I mean, it was so, it's such a cute little house, but it was really fun to go back and just kind of reminisce ab about growing up there. Uh, we lived in that house until I was four and then, um, and then we moved. So, um, I have a younger brother and he is like three and a half years younger than me. So we moved out of that house when he was a baby. Um, and then for a short period of time, we lived with my grandparents because my, my parents decided to build their second house. Um, so by the way, this, this, I don't know why I didn't do this sooner. I just cut a piece of paper at that background size because I, I do out of the pocket stuff all the time. So I cut a piece of paper and I hole punched it. And now this is what I use when I line up my holes instead of using a page protector, because I always found it really hard to like get my page protector in and then take it out. And it was just so complicated. So I don't know. Yeah. If you haven't done that, I, I, I highly suggest making yourself a little template. Like that was genius. Okay. Let's add some adhesive to these. Okay, so yes. So my second house. So my second house, my parents built. And it was in the same town. So all three... Honestly, I lived in the same town until I went to college. And then um, I went to a couple of different colleges. Um, still graduated in the four years, but I went to three different colleges in four years. And then... Um, lived in another town at first when my husband and I got married and then uh, ultimately decided to move back to Fenton. So we live in my same, in the same town that I grew up in. Like we moved our family back here and that's where we're at is the same town. So, um, yeah, so my, and my parents have never left. They've always been here just, you know, in, in different houses. So my second house, my parents built and um, it was on like a dirt road and um, we had, I don't know, it was, it was a really nice house. Like when we were, when we were kids, my parents put in uh, an in-ground pool 
I just remember having like company over all the time and playing in that pool all the time. Like it was, we loved it. It was a really good house. And that's where I spent most of my years. Like when I think about my actual childhood house, like the house that I grew up in more than any of the other ones, it is that one. That was my, that was my for sure growing up in house. <laughs> um, and then when I was in high school, my parents built a new house, uh, same town, but new house. And um, we moved there when I was a junior. So I only lived there for two years before going to college. Uh, but my siblings lived in that house the most. So that to them, like if you asked them what house they grew up in, they would say, you know, the third house. Um, I did move back after college. So like, it's not like I didn't live there. I definitely lived there quite a bit. <laughs> but I just feel like I really grew up in the middle house. That's what I remember the most. Okay. Okay, so there's all those little fabric pieces. That turned out super cute. I really like the way that that looks. I wonder if I can just have some like adhesive here poking out. No, I don't like that. Okay, fine, good enough. Okay, so we've got the stripe on the top and the bottom. We've got the little house on here. Um, so these pictures are gonna go on the side and I, before I can put the pictures on, I probably need to put on my addresses. So these are just the house numbers that I will add. Yeah, so maybe if I put these on first, then I can figure out where to put those pictures. So these are really tiny, really super duper thin. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and get these adhered all down. I'm gonna put you guys in fast forward or I may even just skip over this portion so you don't have to see me adding glue to like every little thing. And then we'll come back um, and I'll add the title on and then um, we'll go from there. So. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and get to it. Okay, so now we've got the numbers on there. So next what I'm gonna do is go ahead and adhere down my photos. I'm just gonna use my roller tape here. Um, so that all I'm gonna have left is the title and I can decide actually if I even want to put the uh, cutout one on there or not. Okay, so there's house number one. So for this spread in general, I actually, uh, prior to prior to this kit being chosen, there was a spread that I saw on Instagram and I will, I will put a link to it in the description below so you guys can go see it too. Um, but there was a creator and I cannot think of who it was right now who did it, oh, who made it. So that's why I'm going to put it down below because I just, I can't remember her name right now. Uh, anyway, she did a spread about her childhood homes, but she didn't actually have images of them. So what she did instead, and it might not have been childhood homes. It could have just been homes, like just homes that she had lived in. Um, anyway, she didn't have pictures of them. So what she did instead is she used the plastic pieces as placeholders for those different homes. And I thought that that was genius. I loved it. I loved um, the idea of documenting different homes. So that ultimately inspired this whole spread in the first place. Mine is a little bit different than hers, but she also did the house numbers. That's where this idea came from, was totally from her page. So I will. I will put her down below so you guys can go check out her page as well. So now we've got the house on there, the numbers, the journaling, everything. So now the only thing I have left is to decide if I want to add these as an, as an additional texture on here um, instead of the printed text. So the nice thing about printing it is that I know exactly where to put everything, but I just don't know. I feel like I need to cover it all up so I can decide from there. So let's just place all of these on top and then we'll make the decision because I might not even need it at all. But the good news is, is in my in the computer stuff, I showed you guys how to make this cut file as well. So if you um, want to change the color or you do want a different texture, like maybe you've got you know a different textured um, paper that you want to use, you could totally 
could totally do that. Okay, so that's what it would be like with the cutout on top. And honestly, I kind of like the tones of the actual printed better. I do. So I'm just going to leave it like that. So we'll just throw all this back in this here. And maybe I'll use those for something else some other, at some other point. It's growing up, so I could definitely do a story about growing up. A growing up story. Okay. So that's going to do it. That's going to finish the spread. I'll just put this stuff, pull it off my desk. Um, yeah, I, I love this story. I think this is really, really fun, cute. I really like things that have a, a little bit more structure to them uh, and definitely things with white space. So this kind of fits the bill for that. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up down below and don't forget to hit that subscribe button uh, so you can see all my future crafty videos. I hope this inspires you to tell stories of home and maybe stories of your childhood home or homes as well. Um, if you are joining in on Story Kit Crush this month, uh, let me know in the comments below, especially if you're doing the home kit, but regardless, no matter what kit you're doing, if you're crushing something this month, let me know. I would love to follow along with you and see what you are creating. I will be back again next Friday with my next Story Kit Crush project. Um, so I hope that you guys will join me then. And until then, I do have a couple other videos planned for uh, the coming week. So until next time, I hope that you guys have a great rest of your Friday and a fantastic weekend. And I will catch you all in the next video. <laughs> Bye now.